stronger, stronger people. And I was like inconsistent for some games, but other games I was, I did pretty good. Nice. All right. Well, hopefully with, uh, with some of the feedback here that, uh, that I can give you here, we, you can, uh, you know, you can, you can help change that for next season. Right. But um, the one thing I'll say for sure is playing against bigger, stronger guys. That is probably the best way to get better. Yeah. Right. Um, you know, it's, it's uh, that, that's one thing that, you know, there's, you, there's no substitute for that one. Like that's, that's definitely guys bigger, stronger, better. And then you got to raise your level of play to, to, to be able to compete with those guys. So I think that that's good for you. Um, so anyways, we'll jump into some of these clips here, right? So I've got 10 offensive clips, uh, eight defensive clips and two clips, uh, with regards to rebounding, um, you know, just, uh, just some simple stuff. Like, you know, none of the stuff here is too complex. Um, you know, and the other thing too, right. So just remember the stuff I give you here, just my thoughts, just my suggestions. It's up to you whether you take it or leave it. All right. Um, the second thing, if at any point I'm going through these clips and I use a word, a term or anything that you don't know what it means, stop me right away. So that way I can explain to you what it means. And that way you understand what we're talking about. All right. Um, and any question for that matter, any question is, is welcome. All right. Yep. All right. So let's, let's jump into the first, uh, we'll go offense first. Okay, we'll jump into the first clip here. Can you see the screen all right? Yes, sir. All right. Okay, so we'll just play the clip here. Right. So we'll, we'll take that back. There's, there's about three portions to this one here that that I want to look at here. Right. So the first one here, let's see what you do in transition. All right. So shot goes up. Right. Rebound, you run the floor. Right. So in this situation here, were you the first guard down the floor? I'm assuming you play one of the guard positions, right? Yeah. All right. So you're the first guard down the floor, right? Yeah. Um, okay. So I'm not sure what your team's, um, you know, transition slash um, spacing principles are, um, but in this in this situation here, um, what I would suggest is if you are one of the first guards down the floor, or if you are the first guard down the floor, it, depending on whichever wing it is just for spacing purposes to make sure that, you know, things don't get bunched up, guys have drive lanes, all that kind of thing. Um, I would suggest if you're the first guy down, sprint to the corner, right? Because if you sprint to the corner, right, so you see this is you right here where my cursor is, right? You can see this guy running the same lane as you kind of comes right on top of you, right? And the spacing's yeah. a little jumbled up, right? Yeah. Um, right, so that's the first part. Okay, so second part, play the next portion here. Okay, uh, on the baseline drive here, right? I want you to put yourself in the shoes of the ball handler, right? So if you're driving baseline here and you've got your guy guarding you and you've got one help defender for sure, a second help defender on his way over, right? What are your, if you were the ball handler here, what are your options to give up this ball? If you had to, either, either you can dribble it back out, kick it to the corner, or the guy near the like the foul line. If it's open enough, you can try to hit the pass there. Right. So right now, based on, you know, like I said, put yourself in the shoes of the ball handler. If this was your teammate, where you are right here, where would you want him to be if he drove baseline? Corner. In the corner. Why would you want him to be in the corner? It's the easiest pass. It's the easiest pass, but why is it an easy pass? Because you're already going that direction. 
you don't need to like try to adjust yourself to make a pass up top or to the wing. Right. So the, the simple answer is because he can see you. Right. So if you're hanging out here, you're in the, you're in the vision of these two help defenders here. If you're spaced to the corner, you really help your teammate out a lot here because it's a much easier, he can see you. So it's, it's a much easier pass. Right. Now that's the first thing. The second thing is if you're, if you're spaced in the corner here, ready to catch and shoot, that's an easy jump shot for you. Yeah. Right. You don't have to, you know, you don't even have to work for it. Right. You just, that ball comes to you, you let it fly. All right. All right. So we'll play the next piece here. Right. Good catch and shoot. Way to crash the glass. Right. Good hustle play. Okay. So, so that one there. All right. Um, so you get, you get all the way down to, uh, figure that one out, right? So you get all the way down here, you get the old board, you bring it back out. Okay. So you get right about here. Okay. So in your mind right now, what's, what's going through your mind right now with what you're trying to do? I was either trying to drive, get a layup, or kick it out. And I also see the other, the opposite wing. There's a guy, if I would drive, and the uh, number one would stay on the point guard up top, then that would be an easy kick out three. Yep. Right. So the only thing now, this it's a good, strong attack. Don't get me wrong here. All right. Um, but when you, when you start to play, you know, against the higher levels or you start playing against some better teams, all right, one thing you really want to try to avoid doing is attacking a set defense unless you absolutely have to, right? Yeah. Like if it's uh, – unless it's the end of a quarter or, you know, you're you're down two, your team really needs a bucket, you know, what whatever it might be, and your coach draws up a play for you to go score, you know, whatever it might be. But you look in this situation here, you've got your primary defender here guarding you, and then you've got two secondary defenders guarding your teammates, right? Yeah. So in this situation, right, because you don't have a shot clock, you yeah. can give you can give the ball up, give it to one yeah. of these guys, cut through space, fill to the corner, anything, right? And then let let the play come back to you, let the ball come back to you. Right. So I, I call this just yeah. giving it up with the intentions of getting it back to make your attack easier. Right. Because this year yeah. you're attacking against a set defense. You've got two guys here in your drive line. Right. So maybe you give it up. One of your teammates attacks, creates a rotation. Then you get it on a kick out. Now you're playing against the kick out or you're playing against the closeout. Sorry, where you can just shot fake and go or it's, you know, one move in and out and you can get to the rim. Right. Um, yeah. So, you know, just just something to make your life to make your life easier. Right. Because um, these these buckets are hard to get. Now, you do a good job of, of getting in and getting fouled. Um, but you know, like I said, once you start playing against some better guys and stuff, um, you know, you, you may not get this call. Yeah. All right. Okay. We'll move on to the second one here. Okay. We'll watch the clip. Right. Yeah. So this one here, right. This is a good attack, right? This, this, this is a good clip here. Right. And it's and it's not something where you're really attacking a set defense. You know, you come off here, boom, handoff and you attack right away. Right. Which is good. You didn't you didn't stop. You're not being a ball stopper right now. Right. You yeah. ever watch you ever. Did you watch the New York Knicks play at all this year? Yeah. <laughs> did you, do you watch what happens when Julius Randle gets the ball? Yeah, he just he just take like he just shoots it like with two seconds left in the shot clock even if there's like 20 seconds left yeah he catches the ball he puts his head down and he does six jab steps before he does anything right yeah. in this situation here you did a really good job you get the handoff and you make your move before the defense can get set and you get the call right so and the one thing i liked what you did here was you kept it simple right so this is this is what i always tell players you've got your primary move and then your secondary move. So what I mean by that is primary move, 
That's your first move you're going to try to beat the guy with, whether it's just a rip right, rip left, or a crossover, right? That's your primary move. If you get cut off, then you go secondary move, whether it's behind the back, between the legs, whatever. You don't, if you don't get anything out of that, then you just move it. Right. Yeah. Because after you go secondary move, you start doing a third move, a fourth move, right? Now you're becoming a ball stopper, right? Now you're stalling the offense, right? Yeah. And it looks like you're trying to force stuff, right? Yeah. But I think in, in this situation here, watch it one more time. You did you did a really good job here. Crossover, spin move, right? And you get the call. Okay, let's watch this next one here. All right. So in this clip here, all right, so we'll start in transition, right, similar to clip one, right? So knowing now what we talked to you about in the first clip, watch yourself in transition here. Tell me what, tell me what you would change. Cut through or be the first guard back. What's that, sorry? It's like cut through or like try to be the first guard back. Yeah, so if, if you're trying to be the first guard back, you want to sprint to the corner. Yeah. Right. Because because what it what what it kind of looks like here is um, and I mean, I don't know if, if this guy on your team, he didn't look too much like a confident ball handler. So maybe that's why you came back. But um, it kind of looked like you were stopping because you wanted to get the ball here. Right? Yeah. Would that be accurate? Yeah, he's our he's our center and he's not really like good with the ball. So I just didn't want him to have a turnover. OK, I figured as much. All right. Yeah, so here, I mean, he had this guy here. I would still sprint to the corner, right? So you sprint to the corner. Okay, now we get another base baseline drive here, right? Yeah. Do you think with one, two, three, four guys in the same line of sight as you, do you think your teammate can see you here? Probably not. Probably not, right? If you were in the corner where um, he's facing, right? That's another wide open catch and shoot for you. Easy points, right? Yeah. Depending yeah. on whether you make or miss it, obviously, right? So just simple things and like just spacing is going to get you a, a lot more easy shots, easy buckets. All right. Yeah. Um, yeah. So you want to get to the corner there, have your feet ready to catch and shoot. All right. And then in this situation here, right? I mean, I don't know what your uh, offensive rebounding principles are for your team, right? But if you guys are the type of team where all guys crash, right, then, yeah. you know, I'd probably, I'd probably crash the glass from here. Now, if you're the one, of, if you're the top guy and your back is your safety, right, then that's a different story, right? Yeah. You want me back to make sure they don't get anything, any transition layups, right? But yeah. just make, make one decision or the other. Don't kind of hang out in no man's land over here. Either crash hard or get back to about the center circle here if you're going to be a safety guy, all right? Yeah. All right. So that shot there, I'm going to ask you, would you classify this as a good shot or a bad shot? Bad shot. Bad shot. Why is it a bad shot? Why do you think it's a bad shot? There was no ball movement, and it was like a tough, like, like one-handed off two floater jump shot. Right. How many times have you ever worked on this shot in the gym? None. None, right? So, yeah. Right? So just in terms of, you know, would it really make sense for you to, to kind of shoot this one? Probably not because you haven't worked on it, right? Yeah. Now, if you yeah. had worked on this shot 10,000 times, right, then maybe, maybe you might shoot it, right? But you're just you're coming down here in transition, right? Yeah. So in this, in this, let's talk about why we shouldn't shoot this one, all right? So first, if I'm a college coach and I'm watching this, right, and I'm watching you because I want to see, hey, you know, is this guy a good player? Does he make good decisions, right? I want to look at 
the types of shots that you're taking, right? Do you understand what a good high percentage shot is, right? Um, so that's that's the first thing I'd be looking at, right? And now if I'm you, right? What else? What I'm also looking at here, right? You've got you've got five guys who are loaded up on you, ready to defend. So even if you beat this guy with your, even if you beat this guy off the dribble, right? You're still running into at least three other guys here, depending on which direction you go, right? Yeah. So if if I was you coming down here, right? You got five sets of eyes on you, right? I would give the ball up here, maybe, or or run a set, right? You can run a set. You can you can give it up, cut space to the corner. You know, any anything you you want to do just to get the ball moving, right? Um, like mm-hmm. we talked about before, you want to attack closeouts. You want to get the defense rotating, right? So that way, it's it's easier not only for you to score, but also for your teammates, right? Um, yeah, and and you just you you want to show coaches you understand what the value the that you value the basketball right yeah so in in this situation like i said give it up move get it back try to make a play all right yep okay look at the next one here Right. So that shot there. Right. So actually my first question is, um, do you use a lot of ball screens with your high school team? Uh, that's not really like a play, but if we want, like we can use it. Like if the coach calls it out, like we call it five, if he calls five, the three people that don't aren't like in the play, they will just like go to the corners in the wing and then the big man will come set a screen. Okay. So, and I, I don't know if you guys work on this at practice, okay, but I'll, I'll, I'll teach you a little bit about it here, right? Um, you want to set yourself up. So when you're using ball screens, you want to set yourself up to, to be successful with it, right? Yeah. And that requires a lot of patience, all right? Because sometimes you catch the ball and you just, you want to get it and you want to go right away, right? So you, you got you to gotta let the screener, so step one is let the screener get set. Right. Um, for two reasons. One, so you can use the screen properly. And two, so your big you don't set your big guy up or your, whoever the screener is to pick up an offensive foul. Right. So you don't he doesn't get called for an illegal screen. All right. So you want to let this guy. So 13 here is your is your guy setting the screen. Right. So you want to let him get set. Right. So you see how you're already using the screen and he's not able to get the right angle. Yeah. For you to be able to run your guy off the screen. Right. So watch, watch your defender here. Right. So your defender is able to get through. Now you, now you don't have an advantage. Yeah. Right. So you want to, you want to start slow. Right. So change of pace is important here. Right. So you want to set up slow and then you want to be explosive when you're trying to make your move. Right. To, if, to, you know, to, to, to keep it simple. Right. So you want to let him, you want to let the screener get set, let him get the right angle. So that way you can get shoulder to shoulder with him. And then as you get shoulder to shoulder with him, you get explosive, you get low and you attack the screener's man. Right. So it'll be this guy here based on his stance here. Do you think he's ready to defend you? If you, if you come off, if you explode off the screen, no, there's no chance he's staying in front of you. Right. So if, if, if you let the screener get set, get to his shoulder, explode around the corner, you probably would, would have had a layup. All right. Yeah. So just, just for the future, right. If you, if you have a ball screen coming, let him get set and then try to turn the corner. Right. So this, this play here, right. So this is, this is just good hustle play. Like college coaches love seeing this stuff. Right. Why do you, why do you think they like seeing this kind of thing? Because I mean, like you may not be the most skilled player, but you, you know, they're going to give you everything they have for every minute of a game. Well, yeah. And it, and it shows that you, you will do the hard things to win basketball games. 
right? That's that's what they want to see. They want to see, are, are you going to work hard? Are you going to sacrifice your body? Are you going to, um, are you going to be alert at all times, right? Because imagine if you weren't paying attention here, right? If you're not paying attention here, you don't see that your, your teammate steals the inbound pass, right? Imagine you just turn around and start running back on defense, right? You never would have saw what happened, right? Yeah. So you're alert, you're engaged, right? You see what's going on. You see, oh, shoot, my teammate stole it, and you crash You crash hard, right? And that was a good finish by, by not coming back down with it. That was solid, all right? Thank you. So those, those things, do as much of them as you can, all right? Right, so that shot there, right? Have we seen this one before? Yeah. Right? So the one the one thing I'll say is what's what's the score here right now? Shoot, you can't even see it. Right. So in this in this situation here, I'm pretty sure because you guys ended up you get you guys won this game, I I believe. Yeah. Right. So you guys won this game by about 15 points, I believe. Right. And there's about two minutes left in the third quarter here. So you guys had a decent lead. All right. So in this situation, you you don't need to force anything. Right. Now, part of the reason why young players shoot this shot or a shot like this, you know, they might force it here and there. Part of the reason why young players do that is because they're they're so used to if you give it up, the likelihood of you getting it back is very slim, yeah. right? Because somebody else is going to shoot it, right? Yeah. Sometimes you have to be okay with that because in a situation like this, it makes you look a lot better as a basketball player. If you just give this ball up and space to the corner or cut through somewhere, than if you were to shoot this shot, right? Do you, do you, do you yeah. see what I'm saying there? Yeah. Right. So it's, it's this one here is kind of all about perception, right? It's like, okay, yeah, I could take this shot. You know, maybe I haven't shot the ball in a while, but also if I pass it, I may not get it back. This is one of those situations where you, you just got to be okay with that. Give it up to a teammate, right? Maybe somebody else will, will attack, make a play. And then hopefully you get it back later in the possession, right? Cause you guys don't play with a shot clock. Do you? I don't, I didn't see a shot clock anywhere. No, so we don't. yeah. So don't didn't yeah so don't have to force anything especially with since there's no shot clock right um yeah. and the other thing you could do too here right and i i got this in the in the notes um you know underneath here it's like you know your, your teammate here number three right you could just give that up to him and you could have got him an easy shot too right yeah because because if you look at what you're attacking you're attacking two guys you got your primary defender and then you got this guy sitting in the paint right so even yeah. if you beat this guy, then you still have to go through this guy, right? Yeah. Now, if, if this was just one-on-one, -on -one, right, and maybe you could put the ball on the floor, get to the rim, a little bit of a different story, right? But the guy guarding number three sagging way in the paint here, maybe you just give him like a little pitch pass, yeah. right? And then maybe he gets he gets an open three, all right? Um, but like I said, it's these kind of situations where, you know, the we've got about three clips here where you take some not so good shots, right? It's it's not about you making or missing the shot. It's about showing coaches that you understand that it's a bad shot and that you value the possession, you value the basketball, all right? Yep. Okay, next clip here. I think there's another ball screen clip. Yep. Right. So this ball screen, so this ball screen here, so it looks like you guys, is this like a set you guys run or did you just call yeah, for a ball yeah, screen? This is set. This is set you guys run. Okay. Yeah. So in this situation here, so the guy guarding you right now, he, he looks like he's the other team's big man, right? And the guy guarding the guy coming to screen looks like he's a guard, right? Yeah. Right. So you use the screen here, right? Now, 
do you want a guard guarding you or do you want the other team's big guy guarding you? What do you think would be an easier way for you to get to the rim and make a play? Probably, probably big man. Probably the big man, right? Yeah. Not to say that you can't go past this, this guard, but it's probably a little more difficult. Yeah. Right. So in this situation here, right. So you use the first ball screen, right. What I would do here is I would pull this back out here and ask for a rescreen. Yeah. So that way now you can attack the other team's big guy in the ball screen and you could try to turn the corner on. Right. Cause it'd be a lot easier for you, for you to attack the other team's big guy here. All right. And the yeah. other piece too, right. And this is, this is just kind of like a side note, right. And maybe you can, you can talk to your teammates about this in practice, right. What I noticed watching this, watching your, your game here is that, a lot of you, a lot of you and your teammates, you guys get in each other's way when you guys are trying to make plays, right? So if you if you watch your teammate number three here in the corner, when you come off this ball screen, right? So you see where he's standing. Yeah. You you can't go right and try to get around this defender because his man is in that drive lane, right? So when you guys are at practice and you're doing your stuff five on O, like if you're not doing, if you're running the set and there's no defense, right. And you're just working on the stuff, right. Communicate with your teammates and say, Hey guys, like, let's make sure we get good spacing. Let's get guys in the corner, right. Make sure we're, we're not overlapping each other. We're not in each other's drive lanes. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so maybe that's, you know, that's something you can talk to your teammates about. All right. Yeah. So, yeah. So use this screen. Okay. We got the switch. Now you got the guard back on you. Ask for a rescreen and try to attack the other team's post player um, of, off that ball screen. All right. Yeah. Okay. Let's watch this clip here. Okay, so I'll ask you again. Good shot or not so good shot? Not so good. Not so good shot, right? So what I do like here, though, is is your strong attack, right? Like, you get the ball up here. You say to yourself, this guy's playing way too close to me. I, I'm, go I'm going past him, right? So, okay, you make one move. Really nice crossover move. Now you're attacking the gap here, right? So you attack the gap here. What happens with the defense? Tell me, tell me what a couple of these defenders did. Um, the uh, one in the paint step, he's gonna step over, probably try to take the charge. The corner yep. help comes up, and he helps on me, and my guy's still on me. Yep. So there's there's two there's two plays here that you can make, and I want I want to see if you can identify them, right? There's two plays here you can make that are the right play. Either one's fine, okay? I want you to tell me what you think the two plays are. Kick it to the corner or wait for the paint to help and dish it to him for an easy layup. Okay, so that, that's a third one, actually. So I, I didn't even think of that one, but I, I like that one. That's good, right? So what I would say here, first one you got, right? So they helped on the strong side here, all right? So your teammate in the corner is wide open here for a catch and shoot jump shot, right? Second option, as you pointed out, if you can probably take another dribble and get into the paint, this player here, I believe that's number 12 on the white team, he's going to step up and you've got to dump off past the 13, right? Yeah. The, the other play you can make here, and I, I kind of call it like a, a next level pass type thing. Look at, look at number four over here. Yeah. Right. So you yeah. take that, you take that first dribble after your crossover, you attack that gap really hard. Everybody collapses on you. The next phase of your game is being able to throw the offside kickoff, uh, kickout pass. All right. Um, now this, this, this is not an easy pass, right. Yeah. But it's something that if you can watch the film and you're aware that this pass is there and that it's open now, next time you're in that situation, right. It's going to happen real fast in your brain. You're going to be like, Oh shoot. 
I saw this play on film. The guy on the weak side is probably going to be open. Let me have a look, right? You have a look and you have that skip pass, right? And then it shows as a guard that you can see the whole floor, all right? Okay, so last offensive clip here, all right? Right. So real simple play. You're probably wondering why I'm showing this one. Right. So you give the ball up, you space to the corner. Right. What was the, what's, what was the difference between you when you were attacking and now your teammates attacking? What did your teammate do that you didn't do? He came up and tried to like, he like, like made it like, like a, just like not enough room. Yeah, so he came up and he clogged your drive lane. Yeah. Right? You did a really good job here of spacing to the corner. And now watch what your defender does. Now your defender helps. Now you're wide open for a catch and shoot. Right? And you do a good job here. Like the pass isn't great. I mean, you had to catch it with one hand. Right? But I, I think you did a really good job spacing here. You make a pretty tough catch with one hand. You get your feet down and you and you get a good shot. Right now, I know you missed, but you did all the right things to get a good shot. Right now, yeah. and 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 as a coach, right, like you're probably sitting here thinking after that shot, you're like, oh shoot, coach, you know, whoever's watching saw me miss another shot. No, what I actually saw was you spaced to the corner, your shot preparation was good, and you made a tough catch. Right, that's what I see. Right. Because if I'm coming to watch you, I probably already know that you can shoot the ball. So if yeah. you miss a shot, I'm not worried. What I'm looking at is do you space well? Are you prepared, ready to shoot the ball? All right. Mm -hmm. So I think that that's why I like I like this one. All right. All right. We'll move on, move on to the defense here. Okay. We got eight defensive clips. Okay. All right. So this is the first possession of the game. All right. Um, so what I, what I want you to do is pay, pay close attention to this clip because we're going to use this to compare to the rest of the clips. All right. Okay. So simple clip, right? You're probably thinking, oh, there's not much to this, right? What I want you to look at is I want you to look at your energy, the fact that you stayed in stance the whole time and you jumped to the ball on the pass, right? Because you might not think those three things are important, but they're very important, right? So look, you're in stance, you're engaged, right? You're defending, you're ready to play. You jump, to, pass goes to the wing, you jump to the basketball. Now, if this guy wants to catch and drive right, you're, you can stunt here and, and you're in his drive lane, right? Yeah. Right. You, your hands are up. You're you're somewhat in stance here. You're engaged. Right. Shot goes up. All right. So I want you to just keep this clip in the back of your mind for the next ones. All right. Yeah. OK, let's look at the second one here. Right. So this clip here, um, how. How do you think you found yourself in a situation in transition where you had to guard two two guys? Let's Either watch this again. So how do you find yourself in this situation? Either miscommunication on what guy you have or someone not hustling back to get on their guy that they had. Right. So in this situation, what I want you to watch here, right? So let's watch your let's watch you. So you're right here, and then you've got two teammates here or sorry this guy here okay so these two guys here watch what they do see how they both turn their head and leave the ball yeah right are you able to see what's going on on this side of the floor yeah because my head's turned that way because your head's turned that way right <clears throat> so what you want to do in this situation is you want to be communicating to these two guys right here with what they need to do right 
So the first thing I would say, because the ball is the most important, I would be screaming to this teammate right here. I'm not sure this player's name or number, but I'd be screaming his name, be like, hey, so-and-so, stop the ball, stop the ball. So that way now he knows, okay, I got to work my butt off to get in front of this ball, right? Yeah. And then I'd be screaming at number 13 here, right? I'd be saying, hey, take take the runner, take the runner, take the runner, right? Or take the guy going in the corner, right? Yeah. I'd, be, I'd be screaming to him for that, all right? Because – there's, there's no way if you guys communicate, even just yourself, there's no way if you guys communicate properly that you should be coming from the other side of the court and then finding yourself in this situation where you got to guard two guys with the ball. Yeah. Right. But all that aside, now let's say you do, for whatever reason, you find yourself in this situation. Okay. Um, do, do you guys do scouting reports or do you guys do um, anything before you play uh, teams in your league? We don't really like watch film on them. What we do is the coach watches film and then we run, we run plays like our practice squad will run the plays and we will have to defend them and try to like use that in the game as well. Okay. Um, now, Jen, just, just generally, do you guys know going into a game, who the, the better players are, who the weaker players are, the better shooters, the weaker shooters. Do you guys generally know? Yeah. Right. So if you ever find yourself in this situation where you're stuck guarding two, what do you think is the most logical thing for you to do as the defender? Get on the better player or shooter. Exactly. Right. So what you want to do is make the better player have to give up the ball to the weaker player. Right. Because you want the weaker player to either have to catch and shoot or make him put it down and, and have to make a play, right? Because then the chances of a missed shot or he tries to put it down and makes a play and then it, it could be a turnover, right? The chances of that are way higher, right? So yeah. you ever find yourself in this situation, uh, close out hard on the better player if he's got the ball. And if the better player doesn't have the ball, you stay with him, Yeah. right? So let's say, you know, if, if this player here was the better player, right? Or sorry, if, if this player here was the better player, right? You would stay here and let that ball stay with the weaker player. All right. Yeah. But like I said, you want to use your, use communication to avoid uh, yourself getting in these situations. As how do you, how do you think you are as a communicator? Are you a vocal guy or are you, are you kind of more on the quiet side? I feel like I'm pretty good. I feel like I could get better, but I was definitely one of the better ones on the team. Okay. All right. Well, like I said, if, you know, continue, continue to try to, you know, every day, you know, try to get better. The one thing I would suggest too, right. And I mean, I don't know if, if you have the chance to do this, but um, one thing when I was coaching at the high school level, one thing I always did was um, I always took my team to go watch a college practice. If you ever get a chance to go watch a college practice, no matter what level you need to go, because what it does is it shows high school guys what communication really means. Right. So I think yeah. if you if you see at a high level how much people actually communicate, right, then you'll start doing more and more of it. All right. Okay, so remember when I told you to keep that first clip in mind that we watched? Yeah. How would you compare that effort to your effort on this possession? Can we watch it again? Yep. Definitely not as energizing, like, as – jumpy as I was in the first absolutely like, right and now don't get me wrong you make a great play at the end right your your athleticism here saves you a little bit right because you get you do you do end up getting a good block here but do you think that if you had remain in stance jumped to the ball stayed low communicated didn't get hit by a screen do you think you'd find yourself in a situation where you had to you had to get a block to to, for your guy not to score no right probably not right 
So this, this is what, this is the term, you know, that us coaches use, we say doing the early work, right? So doing the early work means getting in stance, communicating, right? Not getting hit by screens. So that way, by the time the play finishes, you're not in a situation where you might get scored on. Yeah. Right? Cause this, this happens here too. Right. So you kind of get hit by these screens here too. Right. One thing college coaches can't stand is guys that get hit by screens. Right. In our practices here at Carleton, when guys get hit by screens, you get subbed out. Somebody's allowed to take you out right away. As soon as you get hit by a screen. Right. Mm-hmm. So you want to be able to show coaches, Hey coaches, I don't get hit by screens cause I do my early work and I work hard every defensive possession. Right. Mm-hmm. Pretty impressive block, though. I'll give you that one. Thank you. Right. So the guy, the guy you were guarding here in the corner, um, did you guys kind of classify him as a shooter or? No, we said if he's like. If there's a uh, help, like just help, like you don't have to help corner with him. You do? You you can help from the corner? Yeah, like you can. Oh, you can. Okay. Yeah. All right. Because I put this one in, Craig, because I, I wasn't sure. Because um, most, when you get to the next levels, most teams don't help from the strong side corner, right? Usually because these guys can shoot the ball, right? So when you find yourself, right, so you, you want to, so I know this guy, you guys said you could help off of him, right? Yeah. But what, what ends up happening sometimes too is guys can develop bad habits. So it's like, okay, well, you know, if I help off this guy and then I kind of start doing it all the time type thing, right? Yeah. So what, what you want to just make sure is if this guy is a shooter, right, you have to stay home on him, all right? Yeah. You want to stay home on him. If he's not so good of a shooter, right? you can kind of take one or two steps off of him. Right. And you can kind of clog this drive lane here. Right. You can kind of help your teammate out and clog this drive lane. Right. But if this guy's a shooter, you want to really make sure that, that you stay home um, and, and you don't allow him to get a shot off. All right. Yeah. So this defensive possession here, was this your best effort? No, I kind of got lazy and I turned my head to the ball and I didn't I didn't know where the ball was. Right. Right. So let's let's just look at you here, right? So you see you see how you're even just on the pass here, right? Like balls here, right? Should kind of maybe move over a little bit, right? But now now right? Your guy's coming over to get the ball, right? You see he's about one pass away here, right? You see how you're like, you're straight up, you're really sagging off him, you're not really engaged, right? Yeah. If I'm watching this as as a college coach, it's kind of telling me that you really, you don't value the defensive end, right? I'm not saying that that you do or you don't. I'm just saying that that's what it looks like, Yeah. right? So yeah. like I said, a lot of things are about perception. Right. So when people are watching you, what's their perception? Do you like playing defense? Do you value defense? Do you work hard on on defense? Right. Mm -hmm. Right. So you get here. Right. Now, I know he's not he's not really a shooter. Right. But you still want to you want to get low, have a hand over the shooting pocket. Right. Just show that that you're engaged and you're working hard on defense, because the other thing that that does, too, is it shows, you know, for you know, the, the, the future, you know, when you are your team's best player, everyone's yeah. going to look at you and say, holy crap, look at Brody playing really hard on defense. You know what? I'm going to play really hard on defense too, yeah. right? So you can kind of yeah. set the standard for your team and say, hey, if our best player is going to give everything he's got on every defense possession, well, we pr- we should probably do it too, right? Just yeah. some, you know, to, to be a leader in the future. All right. Okay. The other piece too here, right? So you're the low guy here. So you're the first line of help, 
right? So, mm -hmm. I, and I mean, I know the guy airballs the layup, but when you start when you start playing at the higher levels, this is a baseline dunk, right? Yeah. So you want to make sure that you're you're ready to come over and help if your teammate gets beat, all right? Yeah. All right. What did you see there? I wasn't really like like jumpy to the ball, try to like get in the passing lane, and I was like standing straight up. Yep. Right. So you can you can see like we we won't get too deep into this one here, right? Because you can see the common theme, right? You can see the point that I'm the message I'm trying to get across to you, right? It's yeah. it's it's just the it's the overall effort, right? Because the de defense is all about effort, right? It, it's you know it's about it's about um, your hustle, understanding angles, communicating, right. Showing that you're working hard. Right. Um, yeah. so like I said, we, we won't look at this one too much, just, you know, it's deep because it's just basically an effort play, right. You just, like I said, you want to show people. And when I say people, you want to show coaches, people watching you, anyone recruiting, right. You want to show these people that you value the defensive end of the floor. Right. So this play here. Right. So tell me, tell me what you think happened here. Miscommunication between me and my teammate. I could have either try to fight through the screen harder or told him to like switch out on the shooter. Yeah. So you, yeah, exactly. If you guys just communicate this one here, right. Then, you know, you, you probably would chase him if he's a shooter, if he's coming off a pin down here, it's probably because he could shoot the ball. Right. Yeah. So you'd probably chase, right? Try not to get hit by it, right? Get low, get around the screen, close out under control, get a hand up, mm -hmm. right? But this this all just comes from from being engaged, right? From from just being focused, right? And on, and and the other thing too, right? You're gonna find yourself in situations where maybe you're not guarding somebody that's very good, right? Maybe you're playing a weaker team or maybe, you know, all oh, the guy I'm guarding, you know, he's not very good or whatever it is. Right. And then you're kind of going to get that thought in your head where like, okay, well maybe this is where I can rest. This is where I can take a break. Yeah. Right. That's what you really want to avoid. Right. You want to show that every possession matters, no matter who you're guarding. All right. Yeah. Yeah, so this one here, just communicate, right, or do the hard work and chase them around the screen. Okay, so watch this one here. This is the last defensive clip here, All right? Okay, so in this, in this situation here, right, so you, you help from the strong side corner again. Right now, I, I don't know who that is there. If you guys had him as a shooter, all right. But I put I put just this one in because I don't know if you remember this, but you actually got called for two fouls. You had you had two plays that were identical, literally exactly the same, right? So you had another play where you also helped from the strong side corner here, and then you came down and you tried to swat at it and you got called for a foul, right? So in this situation here. Right. So, OK, your teammate gambles here. He doesn't get it. Do you think you're in good position to help this here? No. Probably not. Yeah, probably not. Right. Like you if you had to get in here and take a charge, do you think you'd be able to do it without getting no. called for a block? No, you no. wouldn't be able to get your feet set in time and get in legal guarding position. Right. So. Who do you think is the first line of help here? Man in the. Uh, block or like like yeah. in the paint yeah so this this low guy here right so and then you know when i send when we send you this video here and you know you can go back and read the notes here 
right? You can, you can see some of the things that I put here, right? One of the things is, right, what you should be doing in, in this situation here is you should be communicating with your low guy here, yeah, right? Talking to him, say, hey, be ready to help. Hey, be ready to help. So-and-so be ready to help, right? Yeah. So that way, that way they know, okay, shoot, I have to be ready. I have to stay engaged because if this guy gets beat, then I got to be the first line of help. Right. Cause then this guy would help number three here would drop to take this guy here with the two different color shoes. Right. And then you avoid this whole foul process altogether. Right. Yeah. Cause what if, what if this is a close game and you've got three or four fouls, right now you, now yeah. you pick up a cheap one here and maybe you foul out or now you got to play, you got to play tentative cause you, you, you got four fouls. Right. Yeah. So you just want to put yourself in, in, in situations where you're going to be successful, right? You don't want to set yourself up for failure. Yeah. Right. And then you want to finish this possession uh, by, by crashing the glass. Yeah. Or sorry, sorry, just in general. Yeah. Right? You want to finish the possessions. Every defensive possession always crash the glass. Yeah. Right. And that leads, that leads into the next one. Okay. We just got two rebounding clips here. All right. So let's, let's watch your, your, your rebounding effort here. So this play here, right? If, if, uh, who was it here? If, uh, if this player here was to miss this layup, who do you think would get the rebound? As of right now, who do you think would get the rebound? Number two coming in. Definitely number two would probably – I'm not saying it would for sure happen, but he has yeah. the highest chance of getting that rebound, right? Yeah. So in, in this situation here, right, you got you to gotta play this possession to the end, right? So you yeah. got to make contact with them, right? And and mm -hmm. part of what you just – part of what you did here is you kind of just caught, caught ball watching, right? You – you yeah. turned around to see if the guy was going to make the layup, right? Yeah, yeah. So you got here, you saw, shoot, this guy's going to the basket. Let me see if he makes the layup, right? But while you were doing that, the guy you were guarding was crashing the glass hard, right? And he put himself in really good situation to to get an uh, offensive rebound here, yeah. right? So, and th and this is this is the kind of stuff that, that avoids you getting ripped on uh, if you guys have a film session, yeah. right? Because when you, I, I mean, I don't know if you guys have film sessions, but, you know, if you, once you, when you move on to play college basketball or, you know, once you, you play, you know, some, some AAU and, and whatnot, like when you start doing film sessions, right, this is the stuff coaches look at, right? Because yeah. if he gets this offensive rebound for a putback, right, not only is coach going to be upset, but all your teammates are going to be upset that you didn't box out. Yeah. Right? So, just want to stay engaged, right? Make sure you follow him in all the way, finish the possession out. All right. Yep. All right. Last one here. What'd you see on that possession? Uh, I stay back because, like, I see my, I catch myself wanting to score so bad that I try to stay back to get an easy layup instead of crashing the rebound. I try to try to, like, get a rebound. Yeah, yeah. And that's – if you look in the notes section here, that's exactly what I put there, right? Like, the shot – the sh you get here, right? And I don't know if this guy's a good shooter, right? But for starters here, I'd probably get – try to get a little bit of a better closeout. Right. Yeah. Even if he's not a good shooter and you're closing out short, which is fine, even just get a hand up. Right. Just to make it a, a little more difficult. Um, yeah. All right. And then so the shot goes up. Right. And you didn't block out here. You didn't make any contact with him. Right. That ball very easily could have came right back to him. Right? Yeah. And that could have very easily have been your rebound. Yeah. Right. Right. So that happens. So the shot goes up. No box out. Right now, look what happens. Now your team's in here battling, right? And you're hanging out near center court because you want to go score. Yeah. Right. These are the kinds of things that 
you know, you, you want, you, you want to avoid, right. You want to avoid, you know, and, and, and not even for, for coaches that are watching, you just want to avoid this because for the sake of your team, right. Like you, mm-hmm. you, you don't want your teammates to be down here battling for this rebound and you're just kind of hanging out waiting for somebody to get the ball so you can go the other way and score. Yeah. Right? So like I said, sh- shot goes up, right. You always, every defensive rebound, if you're not making contact with somebody and blocking out, then you're doing something wrong, right? You should always yeah. find a body, make contact with somebody, and then try to go get the ball, yeah. right? So that's 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 what I tell – that's what we tell our guys, right? Rebounding is a three-step process. Find somebody, make contact with them, and then go get the basketball, all right? Yeah. All right. Uh, yeah, we saw that one. All right. Uh, so that's, that's pretty much it. All right. So, you know, like I said, really, really basic stuff. Yeah. All right. Um, stuff that I think is, is all stuff that you can start working on right away. Right. Uh, uh, it's, it's, you know, it's not the stuff that I showed you here today. It's not like you have to go in the gym and do 10,000 reps to get better at it. Mm -hmm. Right. Like we're not shooting baseline fadeaways. We're not doing, you know, crazy, um, you know, step back shots, you know, where it's, you know, this is really simple stuff that's going to make you a better player and, mm-hmm. and it's going to help you stand out because it, it's going to show that you understand how to play the game at a high level. Yeah. Right. Cause your, your goal I'm guessing is to play division one basketball or play college yeah. basketball at, at one level mm-hmm. or another. Right. So yeah. you you have to be able to show, hey, I understand how to play this game. I know how to do the right things, and I'll be able to help your program win, right? Because once you leave yeah. the high school level, it's all about can wherever you go, can you help the program win, right? Yeah. And coaches look for guys that can understand how to play the game at a high level to help their program win, all right? Yeah. Um, the other thing that that I would that I would do if I was you, all right, and this this is kind of how you get better, all right. You can go watch this same game, yeah, or you can go or you can find another game because you know we kind of looked at this one. You can go find another game. Look at the things that I talked to you about, right? Like they're all in the notes at the bottom of each yeah. clip. So yeah. go watch another game and see if you can find clips of you doing the same stuff yeah and then you'll really get an idea of how often you're actually doing this stuff right because like for example the defense right like i only have eight defensive clips here i probably could have put in 15 or 16 of you doing the same thing right i just i just didn't want us to you know go over the same thing over and over right yeah. If I was you, find another game, you know, maybe maybe a game that was harder, a game that you lost, right? And you can look at it and say, okay, you know what? I didn't give my best defensive effort on this one, you know, and maybe that's, you know, contributed to why we lost. Or, hey, I didn't really rebound on these three possessions. The other team got an old board and scored. You know, I probably yeah. could have rebounded better. Or offensively, it could be like, yeah, you know what? I took three or four really bad shots that we probably could have got better shots if I had to just move the ball. Yeah. Right. So that's, if, if I was you, that's what I would do. Watch a couple other games that you played this year and see if you can identify this stuff. All right. All right. Yep. Um, you got any questions for me? Any, um, you know, any questions? Um, how do you guys like work on communication and practice? Like, is there like a specific drill or do you like? So c- communication for us is we, we have, we have our terminology for what we use in every situation, right? Like for example, mm-hmm. for ball screens, right? Like if we're going to hard hedge it, we say that we're going to shock it, right? We're going to shock mm-hmm. it and go under, or we're going to ice it or we're going to whatever. Right. So one thing, one thing that I would say that you could do to work on communication is you could one of two things. One, sit down with your coach yeah. and say, Hey coach, I want us to work on our communication at practice. Yeah. Um, 
can we put together a list of the term of the terms that we use for different situations so that way guys know what they can say in different situations um to communicate to teammates right yeah um so so that would be the first thing the second thing would just be try to hold your teammates accountable if they don't communicate yeah right like if something Mm -hmm. goes bad right if you know you give up a layup or you know someone's not there to help or you know, somebody didn't get back in transition, whatever it is, right. You have to talk to each other about it. Right. And it's not, and it's not about getting on people, right. It's not about saying, Oh, Hey, you're supposed to do this. Or, hey, why didn't you do this? Right. It's more saying it in a constructive way where you're saying, you're saying, Hey, you know, come on guys, you know, we need, we need to get back on defense. Hey guys, we need to communicate to have somebody on the help side. Right. So that way now yeah. your teammates know they say, oh, shoot. OK, you know, for us to avoid getting beat like that again, if we communicate, we'll be OK. Yeah. And uh, one more question. What do you guys do on like ball screens? Do you offensively switch them or or de- you- offensively or defensively? Defensively. Do you guys switch them or do you try to fight through them? So we switch one through four. So like positions one through four. Right. Um, we switch it and then any ball screen uh, involving our five man on the right side of the floor. So if you were using it towards the middle going left, so like, uh, like this area here, if you, if you got ball screen here, right. If he comes to set this screen, right. And I want to use, and I want to use it. I want to use it going left. The ball screens here. Right. And I want to use it going left this way. Right. So on this side of the floor here, we shock and under. So the five will hard hedge for about two steps. And then our guard will go underneath and meet him on the other side. So the reason we want to do that is because we want to keep the ball in the weak hand of the offensive player. Yeah. So if he's going to his left, we say, hey, you know what? You want to go left? We'll let you go left. All right. And then on the other side of the floor here, um, we ice everything. Do you know what icing everything? Do you know what icing it means? No. So ice icing basically means we 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 take away the top side with the guard. So the guard will sit kind of like on this line here, and then the big guy will kind of guard the baseline here. Right? Yeah. So if if uh, if you want to, you can you can go on YouTube and just type in ice defense and you'll 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 see um, you'll see some videos on it. But the reason we do this is because now if a player wants to wants to go right, he's going to run into this guy. Yeah. So the only way we allow him to go, we only allow him to go left. So we only allow him to come and try to attack it this way. Yeah. Right. And then uh, in the middle of the floor, we just keep it left. So we would do this in the middle of the floor. We would do the same thing that we would do on the right side. Yeah. Any questions? Any other questions? Or are you good? I'm good. I just have one quick thing. Um, just a question about what, when you're recruiting guys, um, what are the some of the non live basketball stuff you guys look at on film for like dead ball situations, sitting on bench situations, stuff like that? But body language is huge. Body language is huge. What you do after something doesn't go your way, right? Like let's say you if you turn the ball over and then you don't run back on defense, or let's say you you know you turned it over two or three times in a row and coach subs you out and you throw your arms up in the air and you walk to the end of the bench and you start pouting because you got taken out of the game. Right. That's the kind of stuff that kills culture. Right. And when we talk about culture at the college basketball level, right. It's culture means how you, how your team carries themselves in terms of your behavior on and off the court, how you treat each other, right? How you treat your coaches, how you treat your teammates, all that kind of thing, right? Um, 
So we look at a lot of guys like, you know, if you get subbed off the floor and you go sit on the end of the bench and you, you know, you slouch and, you know, you're complaining to, to your teammates that you came off the floor and that you think you should be back, you should be on the floor or, um, you know, you're upset that you're not getting the ball. You're upset that you're not getting shots. Right. That's, that's, that's the kind of stuff that coaches look at that, you know, that's kind of outside of the direct playing of the game. Right. That's the kind of stuff that you, that we look at and we're like, we're like, geez, like, you know, we, we don't want to have to deal with that stuff. Right. We don't want to have to deal with it. And your teammates don't, don't, don't want to have to deal with it either. Right. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, the one thing we always tell guys is, you know, try to, try to remain positive in, yeah. in situations. Right. Like, you know, if, if for whatever reason, right. You, let's say you miss three or four shots in a row, right. Coach takes you out. Right. You know, just remain positive about it. Right. Think to mm-hmm. yourself, Hey, you know what? Yeah. I missed three in a row, but I put in the work at practice. I get in the gym early in the morning. Right. I, I get the reps in my next shots going in. Yeah. Right. You know, just simple, just simple stuff like that. Right. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like I said, body language is everything and, and everything you do, we're watching it. Everything. So p- positive, good body language is, is good. And even, even too, like you, you see if a teammate makes a mistake, right? Like if a teammate makes a mistake, do you turn around and yell at him? Do you turn around and tell him, Hey man, don't do that. Right. Or do you tell him, Hey man, that's all right. Let's get it back on the defensive end. 